This title's not an exaggeration. As a physical therapist, this is the one thing that every single human needs to be able to do. Suck it in. You know, I'm not just being ridiculous. Does it look better aesthetically? Yeah. But functionally, it's so much better. It's what we call breathing and bracing. How do we pair the two? How many people can't squeeze their abs? And breathe while they're squeezing their abs. It's fascinating. It's simplified. It's pressure changes. That's why when you go up at higher elevations, it's a lot harder to catch your breath. You want to even know how our lungs work? Or what boils lies? Huh? That's my Excuse me, ma'am. Do you know where balloons are? We have no balloons. No balloons. Let's try again. Oh, yes, we do. Balloon corner. Okay. Let's make these vacuums. Oh gosh. I haven't had Sunny D in since I was like 12. <laughs> so what Boyle's Law means is that as a volume increases, the pressure in said volume decreases or as volume decreases, the pressure in said volume increases. Kind of makes sense, right? The smaller the container gets. Gosh, that root beer is a bad idea. If any of your kids are in STEM, they've probably done this before. What do you want, do you want to do first? Small, medium, or large? What do you think? Small? Okay. Can you see inside of there? Smiley face? Yeah. So in theory, this is your diaphragm. In, this is your chest cavity, and the smiley face is your lung. As your diaphragm expands, your lung gets bigger too. <laughs> I'm, this dude, he's so confused. He's wondering, why isn't this working? It should be simple. Why isn't it working? And I realized if I zoom in, can you see that? Can you guess why? <laughs> I put the cap on it, which is like, Suffocating someone, a suffocated person can't breathe. Oh, God. That's a silly, silly guy. Let's try this one. There she is. We did it. So, you can see on the B cam, as I pull out, do you see how the balloon gets bigger? And as I push in, do you see how the balloon decreases? All I'm doing is affecting the volume within the balloon. So as I pull outwards, I'm increasing volume. So that's Boyle's law. Is this, po is this possible? But I need to be able to pull. That might be possible. Oh gosh, why didn't this one work? Yeah, 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 yeah. this is so cool. Science is cool. All the different bottles are showing you. It's just the different relationship between size of chest cavity, how much air can get into the lungs. I have to work a lot harder for this compared to this. Now, does that really matter for you? No, but it does matter for part two because it's showing you that if we can alter the relationship between the chest cavity and the abdominal cavity, we can alter our breathing dynamics. So when you suck it in, you're putting more pressure in your abdominal cavity, it's forcing your diaphragm to work harder to go down into your abdominal cavity. So it's like lifting weights for your diaphragm. What's really good about this is the diaphragm is parasympathetic in nature, which means it's the rest and digest, like turn down the, the nervous system, turn down cortisol, turn down stress, turn down adrenaline, turn out all the get me going chemicals and turn up the resting chemicals, the recovering chemicals. And if you can get better at sucking it in, you're turning that up more consistently. You're turning on your recovery more consistently. That's one part of it. Part two is it helps with GERD and acid reflex and all these stomach things that we have going on. Part three, it helps with the lymphatic system because there's a huge lymph node right by your diaphragm. So every time 
you're contracting and relaxing, you're pumping that lymph node to get all the junk out of your body, lymphatic system, sewage system. Part four, it's actually drawing in what we really care about from a biomechanical standpoint. It's actually drawing in your ribs because your diaphragm connects to your ribs. It's creating a much stronger pillar, much stronger core that allows your core to actually do its thing. So, so many people, so, so, so many people can hold a plank for forever, can do so many pikes and all these fancy ab exercises but they get tired and they get exhausted when I ask them to breathe and breathe at the same time, just laying on their back. This is not that great of an example, don't get me wrong, this is not that great. But what it's trying to do is showing you if I can decrease the volume in the big bottle, the abdominal cavity, when I pull on the diaphragm and I contract the diaphragm, we get much less changes, much less changes in the lungs. So then my diaphragm has to work harder and my abs and my diaphragm have to now try to work in sync while I'm breathing and I'm bracing. There's another level that gets deeper into this because your, your, your abdominals can control how fast the exhalation happens. That's all abs, exhalation. You can probably guess if, you under, if you're following this, you can probably guess why. Don't worry about it, but you can probably guess why. When we exhale, we use our abs and we're trying to put more pressure in our abdominal cavity. When we exhale, like, you got it. If I put more pressure here, it's gonna cause this. To change if you doesn't matter, but if you got it, I'm proud of you. I'm real proud straight of you. From the mud like Ruby. Ruby. Straight to the stair, they love me. Love me. I understand they hungry, but please don't hate that stuff. So we've covered very briefly what breathing is, but let's get practical. I want to be clear. I'm not saying that this position's bad. I'm also not saying that you need to be in this position. I'm not saying that anterior pelvic tilt is bad. I'm also not saying that you need to be in a posterior pelvic tilt. I want you to be able to use your abs see my belly. I want you to be able to take away that belly by drawing in your abs, not actually sucking in air, <gasps> not sucking in air, but theoretically sucking in your abs without altering your pelvis, and without altering your shoulders. So many people can only squeeze their abs when they tuck their butt. So many people can only squeeze their abs when they're doing a crunch. I want your abs to be working all the time. That's the purpose of this. How do I get my abs working all the time? Super simple. Draw in your abs, squeeze those abs. So again, as you're looking at it right now, my belly's here, it's just my belly. We all have it. I don't care how big your belly is. I don't care if you're 5,000 pounds or you're five pounds. We all have the same muscles. We all have ab muscles, so we just need to learn how to use them. So you take that belly, which I'm super exaggerating, and we draw in those muscles without tucking my butt, without doing a crunch. Keep those abs engaged all the time, just think about it. Then it becomes automatic, you don't have to think about it. And you'll probably feel a lot better too. Okay, have a good day, appreciate you guys. Yeah. Oh.